morning. Welcome to another vlog. I am back from Morocco. I just got back yesterday. I am slightly delirious with jet lag. Uh, I do have some bad news. Let's just get that out of the way. I have some bad news. Um, I was vlogging the whole trip. I was so excited to get like a really fun travel vlog up. And then uh, close to the last few days that I was there, my vlogging camera was pickpocketed <laughs> out of my bag. So lost my camera, lost all the footage, which is the most heartbreaking part. Uh, the camera obviously can be replaced because I am on a new vlogging camera right now. I ordered one while I was there, so it was ready to go uh, when I got back. Um, I just feel, I was so heartbroken. I was like, I had such good footage. Um, and I was so excited to share the whole experience with you, but I was, you know, I was just a little careless, um, was starting to get careless. I was so, so careful. It felt like at the exact moment, I like let my guard down a little bit. Um, I got pickpocketed. So anyway, say la vie. Um, I just wanted to talk about the trip at least a little bit. I know you guys are interested. If you follow me on Instagram, I posted uh, many of the highlights, uh, essentially basically everything that I did um, because I did a bunch of excursions while I was in Marrakesh. It was incredibly long, very, very long. I was, a, ooh, excuse me, I was away for a total of two weeks and um, I was in Morocco for 12 days, 12 days-ish. Um, and it was really <clears throat> just such an experience. It, it was incredible. It is always um, so eye-opening and so humbling and life-changing to like immerse yourself in a com like a completely different country. It's, it's not like I went to um, a very familiar or neighboring country um, for two weeks. Morocco is quite different <laughs> from America, as you can imagine. And I find this when I travel, and I think that's why travel is so important, is that the more time I spend in a country, you know, at first you think, oh my god, like this is so different. This is so foreign to what I'm used to. And as time goes on, and the longer you spend there, and the longer you get to know the people of the country, you realize just how similar we all are um, and how, you know, we really are just humans. All of us are just humans doing our thing, similar struggles, um, similar things that bring us joy. And that's my favorite part about traveling is really just spending time and getting to know the people of that country. But it was, I mean, what an experience. So just quickly, I'm sorry, this is probably very boring without any footage, but I'm gonna try and throw any footage that I had on my iPhone up here because I was taking some things like in portrait on my iPhone and landscape on my vlogging camera. So anyway, I'll try and, and zhuzh this part of the video up with some, um, you know, B-roll and cutaways or whatever. Um, but we stayed at Riyadh Star, which is Riyadh in Medina, which is like the, the old town in the center of Marrakesh. You know, Riyadh Star is beautiful. It was really the customer service and the hospitality that blew me away. So nice, so accommodating. And the, you know, and, and just something I also realized the more time I spent there, that it wasn't just the people at Riyadh Star, um, that the Moroccan, and of course, of course, I'm speaking in generalities, um, but I, I sensed a sense of um, just calmness there. It is a very chill, country. There's also, um, I noticed kind of like a fascination with Bob Marley and reggae <laughs> there. So that's the kind of culture it is. It is very, very chill. There weren't any moments there where I felt a lot of tension from the people. I mean, there were moments of anxiety because I'm in a different place or whatever, and it was, it's so different. And I'm just sort of like navigating uh, the Medina, which is like a maze basically. Uh, but the people there are super chill. And it was really, um, yeah, it was just great, <laughs> just really great. Um, so anyway, we stayed at Riyadh Star and um, myself, my friend Jen, and um, our friend Veronica, the three of us shared a room. And for the sake of their privacy, I didn't really shoot a lot of footage of the actual room, but it was comfortable. Veronica and I stayed each in a twin size bed, and then they had this kind of like fold out couch um, that was like 
I would say maybe like a full size. Um, so Jen slept on that. Uh, we were celebrating her 50th, so we wanted to treat her with, you know, with the princess gloves, made sure that she um, got the best of everything. So anyway, um, that was really fun. We had breakfast there. Um, they cooked dinner for us on some nights, just whatever meals that we wanted. We just had to let them know and they would prepare something for us. And their food was incredible. It was really, really incredible. And I was basically tagging along, I mentioned this before I left, I was tagging along uh, to a yoga retreat that was run by Kelly Cam. I'll leave her information down below. She is wonderful. I mean, talk about someone with the best energy. She just is like a, a bright but soothing kind of like light of a presence. And she was incredible. And she was fine with the fact that I only took one yoga class. <laughs> <laughs> I only took one yoga class. My friends, of course, um, joined in on all the yoga um, classes and sessions or whatever. Um, they had such a great time. Um, so, you know, we spent a few of our first days in the Medina, walking around the marketplace, which is just, it is, all of your senses are, are going to be lit up. You know, there's bright colors. There's a ton of people. It's really, really small and crowded. There aren't any cars there because the old town has very narrow, um, like walkways, I guess, you know, it's cobblestone, um, and it's, it's very old and it is very maze-like and, you know, I just wasn't used to it. Like we would get directions like, oh, make two rights and then a left and then you'll get, you know, right to the marketplace or the market square or whatever it was that we were looking for. And we would, you know, we would see an opening to the right and we're like, do they mean, is this a right? You know, because everything was so narrow. I was like, it, it just kind of felt like an alleyway. And I'm like, they can't, they couldn't have meant that, but they did. Um, so yeah, it just, it took a bit to kind of get used to our surroundings there. But the marketplace is exactly what you think. It was just, there was just so much of everything. And I actually didn't buy much. I, I, I don't actually end up um, purchasing or shopping a lot when there's just so much because I become overwhelmed and I just keep thinking, okay, I'm just gonna keep going and see what's next and see what's next. And then I end up not kind of getting anything. Um, of course I picked up a few things and I'll show you, um, you know, stuff that I got. And, um, but it, you know, that really wasn't the highlight of the trip, you know, the shop. And obviously it's a lot of fun and, you know, to kind of bring souvenirs home for people or whatever, but, that really was not like the highlight or the focal point of this trip, at least not for me. Um, so yeah, we stayed there for a while. So our first excursion was a hike into the Atlas Mountains. And, um, you know, again, on Instagram, I'll have the actual name of the town that we hiked to if you want to go back and look at um, some of my older posts. I probably have a total of like 12 posts from Morocco on my Instagram feed. Um, but it was a treacherous hike. We were not prepared. It was very, very steep. Um, I'm not someone that hikes all the time, but by the time we got to the top, it was really, it was worth it. It was worth it. It was wonderful. And of course they had set up little stations where they had like refreshments for you or whatever. Um, and little like coverings that you could sit under. Um, yeah, it was just really gorgeous, really gorgeous. And I was so glad I went because again, I'm not really a hiker. So I was like, no, I don't know if I want to go, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it all. I'm here. I don't know if or when I'll ever get back to Morocco, so I just wanted to get it all in. Um, and so my second excursion was to the beach. And again, I was hesitant because I get very, very bad, bad motion sickness. So the drive out to the beach was three hours each way. Um, and we went to Essawara. I can't pronounce any, again, it, it's on my Instagram. I'll try to remember to flash up names um, and pictures or whatever up here. Um, but this beach town, first of all, <laughs> me and my friends, like we couldn't, we couldn't get over the fact that we were in like North Africa. Like we, we just, we were sitting on the beach. It was the Atlantic, which is, you know, the beach that we, um, the ocean that we enjoy when we go to the beach in New York, <laughs> but we would be laying there and we would just look at each other every once in a while and be like, we're in Africa right now. Like we're in North Africa on the beach. Like it was so surreal. And it was so incredible. Um, yeah, it just was, it just, it was really magical. Um, we had the best dinner at the town, uh, the beach town that we were at. Um, it was at uh, Caravan, something. I think there's a longer name. Again, it's on my Instagram feed. 
it was so delicious. And again, the hospitality, the customer service, they were so wonderful. It was really like that whole day, just going out to the beach on the way to the beach, we saw goats in a tree, which is something that you, um, see <laughs> essentially on the way to the beach. Um, I don't know if it's just this, in this one section of Morocco. Um, but uh, you know, apparently the goats, because we're in the desert, there really isn't much, uh, to eat for them on, on ground level. So they climb up into the trees and they stand there and they eat the leaves. So that's why there are goats in the trees. Um, but it is, it, it was hysterical. We, we, were screaming, the, the driver was like, do you want to stop? We were like, yes. So we pulled over um, and took some footage of the, of the goats and the goat caretakers, um, because I think they bring them in to a barn or, or some sort of shelter at night. Um, you know, we gave them some money so that we could um, take some photos and stuff, but that was hysterical. So that whole day was very, very, it was very fun. It was very, very magical. Um, it was very lighthearted and we just, yeah, it was just lovely, lovely. So that was our second excursion. Uh, we went back to Marrakesh the same day. Um, and then spent a couple more days there, just kind of, you know, again, exploring, just walking around the marketplace. And then we went to the gardens, the YSL gardens. Is it, um, Jardin Majorel? Jardin? Jardin? Jardin Marjorelle. So tired. I can't. It's like I learned all this pronunciation while I was there and now I'm like, I can't remember. Um, and that was so beautiful, but I'm going to, I'm going to put an asterisk there. We're going to get back to that. It was so beautiful. I have never had an appreciation for cactus, but the, but the cactus that they had there looked like, first of all, it looked like coral or it belonged underwater. Like they just had these forms, like these Oh, it was just beautiful. And again, I, you know, I have pictures on Instagram. I'll, I'll try and throw some pictures up here. Yeah, so it was just, uh, it was just really, it was so fantastic. And then they had a couple of museums there. I couldn't take, they didn't allow for any um, video or pictures there. And anyway, I would have lost it because I was using my vlogging camera mostly um, this day. So um, yeah, it was just beautiful, beautiful. And it was, um, you know, one of those, it felt like an oasis in the middle of the city. It was, uh, you know, you walk in and you felt completely transported by this garden and these like cobalt blue walls. And yeah, it was just absolutely gorgeous. It's, it is definitely like the one thing when I mentioned I was going to Marrakesh, so many people were like, you have to go <laughs> to the YSL gardens. You have to go, you have to go. Um, so we did that. We went to the museum. Um, that was, you know, beautiful. We got to see some um, YSL you know, fashion or whatever. It was really, really lovely. I wish I had taken more footage of it on my phone, uh, but I didn't. And in fact, my camera was, my vlogging camera was taken right after uh, this excursion. Uh, so anyway, uh, we did that. And then the next day we left for the desert. You guys, the desert was hands down. It was the most taxing excursion because it is no less than a 12 hour drive away from Marrakesh. And if you're someone that gets car sick, defi definitely go, do not let that stop you. Um, but take a Dramamine because you have to drive through the Atlas Mountains. And it was probably at least two hours of just up and down and around uh, through the mountains. And there was construction going on, so we couldn't go like quickly through it. And so it was just this like long undulating drive um, through the mountains. And on the way there, I thought I was going to toss my cookies. I thought I was going to just lose it. And I was in a van full of, I don't know, maybe there was like 12, 14 of us. I was like, oh, this is going to get ugly, but I managed to hold it in. <laughs> we managed to make it. We made a few stops um, on the way to the desert. Um, so we actually ended up in Tin Tinjir, Tinjir. Uh, which is a town, I would say, I guess, halfway between Marrakesh and uh, Merzouga, which is where the desert, the desert city. Um, we stayed there for the night, you know, on the way there because we were kind of, you know, making stops, doing some um, sightseeing. And then, um, uh, yeah, it was on the way in the desert where we saw where there were scenes of like Lawrence of Arabia and Gladiator and Game of Thrones and a whole bunch of other movies. I'll try again. I'll try and remember to throw up the list that they had up there. Um, uh, 
uh, where there were a bunch of, uh, you know, movie scenes shot at this one location. So we stopped by there. So, we, you know, we just did a bunch of stuff like that. We spent the night uh, again in that town. And then um, we made our way to the desert. We got there at about 4.30ish. Um, and so we got on camels. <laughs> we got on camels. We rode camels into the sand dunes of the Sahara. I, again, my friends and I, we would just occasionally like look at each other and be like, we're in the Sahara desert. Like <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't believe, I still can't believe it. I still can't believe it. It's, it really is just mind boggling. And it was so beautiful. Like those sand dunes, the color of the sand, the way that, you know, the way the wind has like formed the dunes. I mean, it just is breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking. So we rode the camels, we got off the camels, we had to race up this sand dune, watch the sunset. Then we came down, got back on the camels and then rode them out to camp. And we got there when it was dark. I have never experienced darkness like that. I mean, they had lights there or whatever, <laughs> but I was like, you know, before like we got into camp, you know, I could kind of see the lights out in the distance, but I was waiting for my friends to come off the camel. And it was like, like you're waiting for your eyes to adjust, but that's it. Like, it's so dark. It is so without light um, out there that it was, that was definitely a first for me. I mean, I've been out or whatever, but there's no place, I, I feel like there's no place in America that's like that dark, that's that far away from any kind of light. Um, so yeah, the camp was, uh, it was so much fun. You know, they served us dinner and then we had a bonfire. We were kind of just like dancing around the bonfire. Uh, we were kind of getting to know some of the other people that had come um, on different tours. And um, the accommodations were, I, I liked the tent that we were in. Again, we had a threesome and it was just like, you know, little twin beds, they were hard. I don't mind a hard mattress. I just, I usually sleep on my back. So it actually felt nice on my back after being in the van and then being on a camel. <laughs> I just kind of slept on my back and it was like chilly, but we had this big um, wool, maybe camel, a uh, wool blanket um, over us. And I actually had a pretty decent night's rest. Um, the facilities, you know, not, not that great. Uh, we, you know, we were in the middle of the desert. It, it was fine, it was fine. There were toilets. Um, and you know, the shower was, I just kind of did like a little rinse and then that was, <laughs> that was it. And then we, the next morning we got on, we had the choice actually of getting on either, um, camels or a quad bike. So for a, an extra cost of about $50, so $25 per person, $50 for a two person quad bike, we could drive those back to camp instead of riding on a camel. And I really enjoyed riding camel. I mean, I thought that was so much fun, but I was like, but we did that. I was like, let's try something different. So uh, my friend Jen and I got on a quad bike and then uh, this other friend of ours, Jody, that we met on the trip and Veronica got on another quad bike um, and we drove out over the sand dunes. That was so much fun. <laughs> I loved that. I was like, oh my God, this is so much fun. I just wanted to go faster. <laughs> I felt like, felt like it was a Mario Kart. Um, so that was just a lot of fun. And we drove that out to watch the sunrise. Um, which was, of course, just breathtakingly beautiful. And uh, just the desert experience that was, uh, again, like I cannot believe I was in the Sahara Desert. I cannot, I can't believe it. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I'm getting emotional thinking about it because I remember getting on the camel we were, when we first got there and we started riding out towards the sunset. And I was just like, like, oh my God, I was so overwhelmed with emotion like I just I couldn't believe it I was like I had to like take a moment you know I'm like on the camel and I was like like this is unbelievable and yeah I'm having the same feeling again anyway it was just great what wasn't great was the ride back <laughs> the ride too was very long because we broke it up basically you know with an overnight stay but it was on the way back, it was like, let's just, we're getting back to Marrakesh. So it was like, we just took breaks for the bathroom and a break for lunch. It felt forever. That ride was forever. It was um, 14 hours basically because of the breaks. It was 14 hours. Thankfully, I don't know if I was just used to it or I don't know what was going on. We went through the mountains and I was totally fine. Um, yeah, it was just, it, it was so, so long. 
So I wanted to treat my friends to a night at La Mamunia, which is one of the luxury hotels there. Whatever. In fact, inventing Anna um, at the towards the end, basically where like her her jig is up, um, <laughs> is at La Mamunia. So anyway, we stayed there for that night because we were leaving the next day, and I was like, let's just. I mean, I knew like our night at in the desert or that whole time we were just gonna feel like filthy animals. <laughs> So I was like, let's just treat ourselves to one night at La Mamunia. So Jen, Veronica, and I stayed there for the night, um, and it was glorious, glorious. It was gorgeous. Again, the customer service and the people there, whatever, because we had luggage we had to deal with from the Riyadh. They had to bring it over, whatever. It, incredible. Incredible. If you want to splurge a little bit, I highly recommend La Mamunia. We had nice hot showers. We had this big fluffy bed. It was amazing it was absolutely amazing and what i wanted to mention the asterisk next to uh the gardens the ysl gardens um the gardens at la mamunia i'm gonna venture to say we're lovelier we're we're more beautiful than those gardens so if you even if you don't stay at la mamunia what we discovered is if you just walk in and you're like oh i just want to have you know, a drink or something at the bar, they have an outdoor garden where you can go and sit. This is the garden. So you can go sit down there, just order some drinks. You can actually order off of like their bar menu. I had a burger um, and you can walk around. It It is again, breathtaking. The cactus, they have all of these, like those little clementines, those little oranges. I don't know if they're actual clementines over there, but that's what they look like, like little cuties, little oranges, all of those trees. I mean, we were like, Oh my God. And there's cats everywhere. Did I mention that? There's cats everywhere in Morocco, everywhere we went at the beach, um, a ton in Marrakesh. They're just all over the place. Um, and there were some very fancy kitties at La Mamunia. So they were walking around. There was a Russian blue. There was the most perfect looking Siamese cat. I don't know if I got any footage of that. There was one that uh, was befriending me. I definitely took some photos of, of her or him. Um, gorgeous gorgeous so uh if you don't feel like doing another excursion or if you just don't have time to get to the ysl gardens maybe try la Mamunia because it, it ends up kind of being free i mean you have to sit and order something but um it was beautiful it was beautiful so that was our last night there and then i had to make the long the long trek home so we flew from marrakesh to madrid then we had to fly from madrid to london and then i had to go from London to JFK. I spent the night in New York again, and then I flew back to Vegas yesterday. So between like all of the bus riding on the desert <laughs> and all of the flights, I basically was traveling for like five days straight. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to kill myself. I was delirious. Um, thankfully, all of our flights were smooth. The connections were smooth, all of that stuff. Yeah. And then I got back here and I just, you know, unpacked, did all the laundry because everything, this is another thing about the desert. I feel like I'm gonna be finding Sahara sand in my clothing and in my luggage and in this house for the rest of my life. It just gets everywhere. It's never gonna go anywhere. Yeah, so, uh, you know, just kind of settled in and at like eight o'clock last night, I was eating dinner with my husband. He's like, you know, talking and um, he's been he's been holding down the fort, bless him. Bless my beautiful husband. He's been holding down the fort. He's been taking care of butters. He's been taking care of my orders. And yeah, so anyway, we were eating and I just was like, kind of like nodding off as we were eating dinner. And he was like, you have to go to bed. And I'm like, it's too early. Cause at that point it was like 7.30. And I thought, okay, I just need to make it to eight. If I fall asleep at eight, I think I can sleep through the night, which I did. Um, so I woke up at about 4.30, um, which is fine. As you guys know, I wake up early anyway. It's a little it's a little on the early side, but I'm okay with an eight o'clock to 4.30. I know jet lag is not over. It's gonna keep, it's gonna be haunting me for the next week, I'm sure, but I'm glad I got a solid night's rest last night. Um, so anyway, that's, that's just the quick synopsis and I'm sorry that uh, that I have no exciting vlog for you. I really was, I was like, I'm gonna make like a real proper like travel vlog. I was like getting really into it. I was making sure I got all these different angles. I was like, oh, this is gonna be so great cutting it in. Next time, next time, the next time I go on a big trip. So that's it. Um, I have to get, I have to get back to work. I. <laughs> <laughs> I have like 5,000 emails I need to uh, reply to and, you know, just get kind of get back into the swing of things. I also, oh my God, 
I have been eating such crap. I mean, not, not that Moroccan food is crap. Moroccan food is actually very delicious, especially in Marrakesh. It was delicious. And the meal that we had out at the beach at Caravan, I mean, absolutely incredible. But there were moments like on the bus where we just had snacks. I was eating like chocolate bars, potato chip, just whatever. Cause we're just like, <laughs> like zombies on the bus. Um, so I was just eating like everything, everything and anything and whatever anyone had. Um, so I need to get back on that. I, you know, my clothes are a little bit tight. Um, so I need to uh, reel that in and kind of get my head back in the game. And yeah. Yeah, that's it. I'm definitely going to be doing a PR haul because I have a lot of boxes. I had some piled up before I left. My husband went to the UPS store once and there's a ton of boxes and I have to go back there this morning and pick up more. So I have a feeling the bulk of this of this particular vlog is going to be um, a PR haul, but I'll try and make it snappy. Um, and yeah, and just, I'm, you know, I want to show you some of the things that I purchased. This is actually something um, really probably one of the things I'm most excited for. I can't pick it up, hold on. Oh, that I got at the um, YSL Gardens. So this is a book that talks about um, like different, basically like different uh, notes, ingredients that you use in perfume. So here, like they talk about magnolia and then all the perfumes, not all, but a lot of the perfumes that use it, some of the bigger perfumes will say that use Magnolia. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, it was such an interesting, interesting book. I'm like, I don't think I've ever seen, not that I've looked, but I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Um, yeah, here is mint. So they have a section for mint and then a picture of it. And then, um, yeah. And then there's a listing here. So the bulk of this book is in French. I don't speak or read French, but I figured with the listings here, that was like information that I would really enjoy and uh, really love. So anyway, um, was really happy to find this. And then there's like illustrations. Here's like a YSL illustration, um, opium. So anyway, that was uh, one purchase that, yeah, like I said, I will, I will go through all the things that I got throughout this vlog. Anyway, let me, uh, let me wake up a little bit and I will be back. Good morning, Butters. That's quite a cute t-shirt you have on. Mm -hmm. Mommy got this for you in New York. It's from Wagwear. Wanna show off your shirt from Wagwear? Mm -hmm. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Whoa. Yes. Okay, I'm just realizing. <laughs> I'm using, I basically bought the same vlogging camera that was taken from me in Morocco, but I had changed up the settings to what? I don't know. So I'm looking at the screen and I'm like, this looks different. This looks different. Anyway, I hope this comes out okay. <laughs> so I was just uh, doing a little bit more unpacking. I'm slowly coming across things that I purchased and I just wanted to show you some spices that I got. Not much. I got a bag of turmeric because my husband and I both enjoy turmeric. It has anti-inflammatory uh, properties. So I got some of that. And then I got a bag of cloves. It was so funny. A French couple came into the spice store when we were sitting there and they asked specifically for this and got some. And I didn't know what it was because, I don't know if you can see it. I just couldn't recognize it. And then when I smelled it, I was like, oh, I know that smell. And I just couldn't think of the word. And thankfully, one of my friends that I was with, um, she was like, oh, that's clove. So I got some cloves. I figure I can put that in some tea or just, you know, if I'm gonna do any holiday cooking, I thought this would be nice. And then I picked up some Moroccan mint tea, which is in abundance over there. Every place you go, you can get some mint tea, which is super, super strong. Of course, they use a lot of sugar in it, and I don't generally use sugar in my tea. Um, so it was really, really bitter, but it was, oh, by the end of the trip, I got really used to it, and I loved it. Um, and then I just got a little bit of saffron. So then I figure I can, you know, put in tea, put in cooking. I just love, love, love saffron and like kind of like the subtle hint of flavor that it gives, but it's super potent. So, yeah, that's what I ended up getting. 
at the little spice store. And there were a ton, a ton, as you can imagine, a ton of these little spice booths in the market. And, um, you know, when you go into the souk, the, the, the marketplace or whatever in Marrakesh, you're supposed to haggle. <laughs> and I'm a decent haggler. I just don't like doing it because I'm like, I just, just tell I just, I want that, give you money, give me the thing, and I walk away. Like, that's that's all I want. But it's, there's just so much haggling going on. And so, yeah, I just didn't end up buying that much actually in, in the Medina um, while we were in Marrakesh. That was one thing. Um, and uh, there wasn't even that much haggling going on with that. And definitely, sorry, peeling an egg and I just dropped some shell. Um, and definitely by the end of the trip, I was like doing no haggling. I was like, I don't care. Just, what is it? <laughs> just what do you want for it? So that's something I got. Sorry, I'm just gonna quickly eat a couple of hard boiled eggs here. The typical breakfast um, in, at least what I experienced in, um, Morocco is very interesting. There's a lot of breads, a lot of different kinds of breads. Um, kind of, I don't know, what I would consider kind of like a normal like roll. They had, they always had those. And then sun mornings at our Riyadh, they would serve almost like these uh, pancakes. And then they would have, it was almost like a scallion pancake without any of the scallion, but that kind of like dense, kind of like chewy a pancake some mornings they had that but like very thin almost like a crepe um yeah just lots of different breads they always had laughing cow cheese like those wedges um and then they had amlau a-m-l-o-u um, amlau amlau again my pronunciation is all off it's like i knew it when i was there and the minute i came home it's like i'm i'm like an ignorant american again um but it's it's like a Moroccan Nutella, but it's made out of almonds. I think there's even some argan oil in there um, and some cocoa and it's sweet. And I can't eat Nutella because I'm allergic to hazelnuts, but I can eat almonds. And so it was, oh, I had a lot of that just spread over the bread. Delicious, so, so good. And then they had uh, some like nuts sitting out. Yogurt was very common. Um, they had like jams and jelly, so I would add like a little bit of strawberry jam to uh, the yogurt. What else would they have? Cut fruit, a lot of like um, persimmon, um, pineapple, mango, some mornings, grapes, bananas. Um, they have these like little bananas. They're like, they're cute. They're not like those mini bananas that you see at the supermarket here. They're kind of like in between the mini bananas and like the regular or normal bananas that we have here in America. Um, what else? That's it. Oh, and they served coffee, but it was spiced. And I think they brew it with, they said it was a mixture of cinnamon, nutmeg, and maybe clove. Oh, that's what I should do. I should grind some of that up um, and, and brew it in my coffee. But now I'm hooked on that. Now I need to like make coffee and like add a little bit of allspice basically into my coffee. Um, I used to put cinnamon in my coffee and sometimes when I go to Starbucks, I ask for that. And I just, I'm not in the habit of it. Oh, but it was so great in the mornings when we would smell it brewing. I would like be racing down for breakfast. It was so great. So, so great. So big thumbs up for a Moroccan breakfast. Okay, I'm walking back to my office because I, I do just have to stop, stop my shit and just start getting back to work. And I just have to show you this because <laughs> I had to take a thumbnail for my declutter videos and I did it like right before I started packing and <laughs> I didn't have time to clean it up. Look, look at all of this, <laughs> what a mess. Oh my God. So I have to go through this today and throw away the stuff that needs to be thrown away. That's like too old. And anything that maybe hasn't been touched. Um, yeah, like just, just give those away um, or donate those or whatever. Um, but it's like I forgot about it, and then I started walking back here, and I was like, oh my god, all of that makeup is still on. Well, I just got back from the UPS store. Um, there's a lot of boxes here. <laughs> there's a lot of boxes here. But I do want to start with one that was actually sent to Miss Fuzzy Butters. I opened it up because I thought it was just food, like regular food, and I thought, oh my gosh, has it been sitting there? And then I realized when I saw the cat and the dog here that this is from Open Farm. 
And there is a whole bunch of stuff in here. Look at this card. We're thrilled to have Miss Fuzzy Butters try Open Farm's obsessively nutritious, pet-worthy food. They will love the taste and you'll love the ingredients. Um, Miss Fuzzy Butters has a very restricted diet. She has such a sensitive stomach and she can't have anything with too high of a fat content. But um, I think anything in here, I can probably give her like just a teensy bit here and there. And anything, oh wow, chicken recipe freeze-dried raw scoops. Wow, it's like a powder. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go through this and see what she can actually enjoy. And anything she can, I will bring to her school. Oh my god, look at this. Are these socks? With the, oh my god, these are socks with her face on them. You guys, look. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh my god, they have a black bottom. They're so cute. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Open Farm. This is, this is hysterical. Look at her face. Oh my God, so funny. And as you guys saw on my thermometer this morning, it is cold here now. So these are very welcome. Thank you so much. And then this is the whole stack of stuff. There's some stuff that I ordered. Like I see the Sephora box. That is definitely something I ordered. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's dive right into this. All right, so this box I opened up already because I was so curious what it was. And inside, and I think I showed this on maybe Instagram, it's a new brand by Naomi Watts called Stripes. So, real talk, real science, real solutions. So Naomi Watts went through early menopause. And so these products are meant to, I guess, target some of the things that happens when uh, women go through pregnant menopause or menopause. So they even have like a, like a dietary supplement vitamin situation. Um, daily menopause symptom support, probiotic supplement, vitamin blend. There's 60 capsules in here. Let's see, it looks like there's a lot of vitamin D, three, vitamin E, thiamine, riboflavin, nice, niacin, as niacinamide, vitamin B6, folate, vitamin B12, biotin, and pantothenic acid. Um, and then there's some other things in there, like a probiotic, et cetera. So that is really awesome. And then there's like just some other uh, skincare products in here, like um, a hydrating facial serum, um, a vitamin C cream, an oil. So I think in all of these products, there's something called Ectoine, E-C-T-O-I-N-E, and it is supposed to be very helpful for perimenopausal, menopausal skin. This genius ingredient uses smart targeted hydration to distribute uh, moisture where the skin needs it most. That's really interesting. So this is called <laughs> Vag of Honor. So this is an ecto, ecto in hydrating and revitalizing gel. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that word correctly, but there is that. And then there is also, what is this? Oh, a hair mask. The crown pleaser, again, with that ectoine in there. Ectoine? Ectoine? So that is very exciting. Thank you so much to Stripes, Naomi Watts, for creating this line. It is definitely something we should be talking about more freely. Menopause. Thank you so much. And then I got this from um, Bobby Brown, and I cannot remember if I share this with you guys, but this is a whole, like, briefcase. There's like a little handle here and it opens up and it has uh, their new concealer there, which I really love. And it has the vitamin enriched uh, eye base. So this is like an extension of the vitamin enriched face base line. And then they gave me some fun things. Oh, like a little card holder. That's very nice. And then a little Bobbi Brown notebook. How cool. And then I've been gone for so long, I did get another box from Bobby Brown. And I had to open this up because it was so heavy. And I was like, what is this? They've upgraded their Lux lipsticks. And the Bobby Brown Lux lipsticks are so, so good. And I've always thought that they rival the Tom Ford lipsticks. So it comes in new packaging and it now provides full coverage and a 10 hour staying power, making it uh, feel as luxe as it looks. So it looks like they sent over all most of the Lux lipstick line. Let's just see what we have here. Here is the new packaging. So pretty. Wow. There is an embossing on the top there. It, this is very, very Lux. So I think I'll have to do, or pull out a couple colors that I like and then gift the others away. It would be a real waste if I 
kind of went through, swatched all of these, and then didn't really use them. Oh, this one's nice. Look at this nice nude. This shade is Rosewood. This one I'll swatch because I'll keep this one. There's Rosewood, that's very pretty. There are a lot of beautiful, beautiful shades. I think that's where Bobbi Brown started, right? With just like a few lipstick shades. Ooh, and look how um, moisturizing this looks. It actually, I don't know if you can see it. It looks kind of glossy. That is so awesome. Thank you, Bobbi Brown. So exciting. Next we have something from Day Rate Beauty. Ah, the last hairpins you'll ever need. Oh wow, how cool. I am, um, I always just use like an elastic band. <laughs> to tie my hair and it definitely does not always look so great. Um, oh, the power pin, nylon coated American steel color matched and dyed in LA. Oh, oh, how cool. That is awesome. Okay, let's see what this power, wow. Oh, wow. This is what the power pin looks like. I guess that's if you have like a whole like uh, a chignon or like a top knot or something going on. Wow. That is super cool. And that was in the color carbon, number nine. And then there is the petite power pin, and this is in shade Dove, number 10. So this is great for gray hair. This is the petite pin. Wow, this is so cool. And then there's uh, like bobby pins, foundation pins, and they all come in like really cool packaging. Oh, that's amazing. Wow, thank you so, so much. Yeah, here's just a picture of all of the products. Those are those power pins, and those are some more of like the more typical like bobby pins. Thank you so much, Dayray Beauty. All right, what do we have here? Ooh, wow, something from Surat Beauty. They don't, um, they don't really send out PR. They have to me in the past, which has just been so incredible. Um, but no, they don't send out PR very regularly. So this is, wow, this is such a treat. Oh, we hope you had a fabulous birthday. We cherish you. That's so sweet. Thank you. We included a little card here and then, wow, look at all this stuff in here. You guys know how much I love Surat Beauty. And I just had to declutter a bunch of their stuff because I've had it for so, so long. Um, ooh. Oh, they included that Beyond Beige Quad Palette. Oh, this is so, oh my God, look at that. Oh, so, so beautiful. These are eyeshadows that, if I'm being honest with myself, I really need to declutter. I've had those eyeshadows for a very, very long time. So this is very welcome. Um, so that's one thing that they sent over. Wow, they sent over a grand palette, which I believe is an empty palette, and then a bunch of their uh, lip slicks, which they know I absolutely love, and I had to declutter a bunch of those. They were just getting too old. So I have Nude de Soleil, Bandy, and Heaven, and some of their artistic blushes. Oh wait, there's one more in here. <gasps> Look at this one. Wow. So this is the name of that color. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliante. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Surat Beauty. This is really, really incredible. All right, here is a nice big box from, wow, I really need my reading glasses these days. Ah, Tata Harper. Ooh, <laughs> look at this beautiful like round box, oh open it up here let's see oh there's a little drawer here oh there's a little drawer with a towel okay let me just tuck that back in there this is their maximalist regenerating cleanser and oh wow oh this is my favorite cleanser from them and now i guess it comes in this jumbo size well this is 10.5 fluid ounces and it's their daily exfoliating treatment so it is a daily cleanser that has just like some bits in there. So you can, you know, definitely exfoliate your skin with this, but it's so gentle that you can use it every day. So I love it. I have very, very sensitive skin and I can use this every day. I think I've gone through a couple bottles of this regenerating cleanser in the past. This is so great. I love how giant this is. It's almost like 
It almost looks like a joke, you know? Oh, that's so great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tata Harper. Something from Persona Cosmetics. I think they've come out with anything new. Oh, they've come out with a new color in their blush stick. And it is already available because I've been gone for so long. This is called Jam. Oh, look at this color. So here's what it looks like in the tube. It's like raspberry jam. Ooh, that's beautiful. Wow, thank you so much, Persona. And like I said, it's already available, $26, and I believe, oh, available on Ulta early November. I don't even know what day it is. I'm completely in my own world. Um, so I think it's available at Ulta. Ah, Retrouvé. Oh, they sent me two more of their Luminous Cleansing Elixir, which as you guys know is my favorite, favorite. And this is actually the only cleanser I brought to Morocco and it was so perfect because it is quite dry there. I thought it was gonna be very similar. Well, it is, I mean, it is very similar to Las Vegas, um, but I don't know if it's just because I was traveling so much and just in a different environment, but it just, my skin just felt so, so dry there. So this is so amazing. Thank you so much, Retrouvé. Oh, this is the best. And this is from, don't know, ah, Victoria Beckham Beauty. Satin Kajal Jewel Liner. Yes, oh my gosh, okay. So there's three new ones, Night Flash, Gold Lame, and Sequin Green. Oh wow, they are really sparkly. I don't think my camera's picking it up. Oh my gosh, they're so, so sparkly though. Oh wow, and then this one is I believe Night Flash. And this is black with some silver sparkles. I really hope you guys can see it. This is sequin green. This is like an olive green with gold. I think like gold sparkles. Oh, beautiful. Oh, and I love, love, love the formula of these eyeliners. They're so soft and they stay put. Wow, big thank you to Victoria Beckham Beauty for these. Okay, from Chantakai. exciting. Oh, I wonder if this is that Lotus collection. That I think was becoming available right around when I was leaving. In the collection, you'll find a silky highlighter, ethereal powder, velvety pink blush, and a dazzling lipstick. One, lips, uh, one lip crystal, which is the dazzling lipstick sold, equals one tree planted. Oh, that's so awesome. So this is their holiday collection, and it's called the Lotus Collection, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the Lotus Collection. And, oh, they sent it in this beautiful makeup bag. Wow, this is such a pretty green. So here's the box packaging. It's that beautiful green with that gold. I guess this, this is like a cross-section of a lotus root, I think. Woo, here is pink opal in the lip crystal. Wow, ooh, it's like a lip topper. Do you see that? Ooh, it's very, very crystally. <laughs> very, very micro glittery. That is gorgeous. And then look at this packaging on their compact products. It's so beautiful. Wow. So this is the Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. Their Perfect Blur Powder is that powder that I love to use with my Kabuki brush and I like pressing it into my pores and it just makes my pores disappear. But this is the glow powder. Oh, it has a little bit of a sh satin sheen to it. Oh, interesting. So this is a baked gelée powder. And then, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but it has uh, a little bit of a light kind of pigment to it and a little bit, a little bit of like a satin sheen. Wow, I don't think I realized that. I thought for some reason that this was going to be um, I don't know what I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was just a highlighter, but I see that they do have a highlighter and a blush. So let's take a look at the highlighter here. Oh, this is the Lotus Radiance Highlighter. So it has like a pinky tint to it. I think that's why I thought it was a blush, but it is very, very light. Let's see. Oh, interesting. It's not that reflective, at least not in the swatch. Wow, I really don't think you can see much of this. It's almost like a powder. Huh. Definitely gonna have to try these out. And then this is the Radiant Blush. Oh, this is much deeper than I thought. Here's the blush. Oh no, it does not swatch nearly as deep as it looks in the pan. See how it looks almost like a, like a warm plum? But swatched, it's a little bit lighter and it has quite a reflection to it. Oh, interesting. I think the one product that I think I'm most surprised about is this highlighter. 
It's not very like reflective. Gradients highlighter. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to try all these out. A big, big thank you to Shanta Kai for all of this. This is so gorgeous. I just love their packaging. And then this, oh my gosh, this is from Dean Davidson. One of my favorite, favorite um, jewelry designers, jewelry companies. And they came out with, oh, this is so pretty, the Petite Pave collection. And they actually reached out to me and asked me uh, what pieces I would like, and uh, it comes in both like gold and silver finish. So I decided to go for a silver finish because I have so much gold jewelry. This is so cool. Look at that, and it has, do you see the petite pave? It's like running through the center of each circle. Oh, that's so pretty. So that is the bracelet. And I have a Dean Davidson coupon code which I will leave down below in my description box. But here is the necklace version of that bracelet. Oh, look at these earrings. Oh my God. Oh, how cool. Oh, I love the way it moves. So same idea. Circles with the pave running down the center. Oh, oh, they're so sweet. This is unexpected. This is an M pendant. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. And then one last thing is, ooh, oh my God, this is so cool. Loved the idea of this necklace because it's just a disc, but then it's actually trimmed on the side of the disc. It's trimmed with the pave work. So cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to Dean Davidson. So beautiful. So the stone that's in there is white topaz. Next we have, oh, something from Viseart. So these are two new Petit Pro palettes, and then this is a new Etendu. Okay, here are the two Petit Pro palettes. So this one is San Francisco, and this one is London. The London one looks really, really interesting to me. I love this purple in here and I love this green in the San Francisco. And then here is the Le Marais Etendu palette. Ooh, beautiful. Ooh, it looks like a sunset. That is gorgeous. Then if you guys are aware of Vizzy Arts, like iconic, iconic 12 pan palettes, those are the ones that are 80 bucks and they come in the plastic packaging. They've come out with petite versions of those. So they sent over two of them. This one is Paris Nudes and this one is, I'm sorry, this one is Paris Nudes and this one is Sultry Muse. And these were like two of my favorite um, 12 pan palettes of theirs. So this is great to have in the smaller size. And then they did send over their new Petit, Petit Foss, their new Petit Four quads. Wow, thank you so much, Viziard. All right, this is a big, beautiful box from Elemis. Sense of Place. Do they have, I didn't know Elemis had candles. Oh, okay, they included some matches. Always, always very, very welcome. And then Mayfair number nine, candle. Wow. So this is, let's see, lavender, chamomile, and geranium. I'm not really the biggest fan of uh, the scent of lavender, but I do love uh, chamomile. This I really like. It's, um, it's fresh and it's a very light floral. I find like lavender to be, it can, I don't know, I find it to be very overwhelming sometimes, but I know it's supposed to be very, very calming. This is, yeah, Mayfair number nine, hand and body lotion. Lovely. And then, a hand and body wash. The um, cap kind of snapped off. Oh, this is amazing. Thank you so, so much, Elemis. Then I did get something from Margiela, which is unexpected and awesome. By the fireplace candle. I had one years ago, finished it up, and more matches. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you so much, Margiela. And next we have something, ooh, something from Kipris. Um, Kipris is one of my favorite organic beauty brands. It is here in the US, I believe they're based in Arizona, and they work with very small farms for their ingredients. So we're a beautiful, beautiful box. 
box. Let's see. So they sent over Puff of Love, which is really lovely. This is um, a wonderful day or night moisturizer. It has like a pudding-like texture, but it's, oh, it's just so moisturizing and it doesn't feel heavy or anything. So there's Puff of Love. I already used up one of these. Um, so I'm glad they sent over another one. And then the uh, Cerulean Soothing Hydration Recovery Mask. This could be one of the first products I used from Kipris because uh, way back in the day when I discovered them, this is years ago, five, six, seven years ago, my skin was much more reactive then. And so I was looking for anything that was like soothing um, or calming or anything like that. And so I loved this mask of theirs because it's like this uh, gel and it really is very, very cooling. It is very, very soothing. Um, so I love that. And then this is a product I don't think I've ever used from them. This is their cleanser concentrate. And can I use this? I don't think so. This is a cream uh, cleanser, which is very, very lovely. All their products are really, really lovely. Oh, this is so fantastic. Thank you so much to Kipris. This is beautiful. Oh my gosh. I have another box from Dean Davidson. Introducing our best-selling mini stud in six limited edition gemstones. Oh, neat. More info. Wow, this is so cool. Hope you love our new mini knockout stud gift box. The one you're getting is the cool tone set, which will look amazing on you. So here is the box. And it flips open. And then, oh, how neat. And then each box is like a little drawer. <gasps> Oh my gosh, so there's three pairs in each gift set. Which one is this? Amazonite? I don't, again, I'm slaughtering pronunciation here. Um, beautiful, it has like a, almost like a green tint to it like this, <laughs> Shantakai. And then this one, is this gray moonstone? This is gray moonstone. You guys know I'm living for this. This is blue slate. Wow, that's gorgeous. That one looks like water. Oh, beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, Credo. Their ooh, holiday mega gift with purchase for 2022. Oh, wow. Let's see what is included. Let me just show you this bag. It's just, it's stuffed, stuffed full of stuff. So there's uh, True Botanicals Resurrection Radiance Eye Cream. We have something from Ilya, the lip wrap. Hydrating mask. Ooh, something from Grown Alchemist. Ooh, a deodorant from Air Taos. Ocean Cleanser from OC, and from Herbivore, Pink Cloud. Yeah, there's just a ton of other stuff in here, so definitely check out uh, the Credo site if you want specifics on what's included in this gift with purchase, but it is a ton of stuff. It really is a mega gift with purchase, and a big thank you to Credo for sending it over. Ooh, so much fun. Ah, and a Sephora order of mine is kind of caught in the middle of all of this PR. Let's just open this up. Here it is. Jeez, that is so cool. This is so like, kind of reminds, <laughs> reminds me like back in the 80s, there was uh, like a comforter set and it was a rainbow and it went up onto the pillowcases and then back down and people did like similar designs like this on their walls, maybe late 70s actually, late 70s, early 80s. Kind of like, I don't know, right? Well, very retro, very, very retro. I love the like greens in there. Very minty, very, very cool toned. Very cool toned palette. Ooh, I'm excited to try this. I'm so glad I ordered this. I wasn't sure, I really wasn't sure, especially because I just went through that giant declutter, but I don't know, this one, this one kind of caught my eye, so anyway. So ordered that from Sephora. Ooh, wow, something from Charlotte Tilbury. Well, they sent over one of my favorite foundations in the shade 1N, which is great because I have 2N. And well, now that I'm back from Morocco, I definitely got a tan while I was over there, but I was getting really pale for a while there and all of my foundations were too deep. Um, but they did send over 3.5 Fair and 3 in the Radiant Concealer. And I think I think I got something lighter, so that is awesome. Yay, thank you so much, Charlotte Tilbury. All right, so we have, oh, we have something from Sisley. Say goodbye to smartphone filters. Meet the new Sisley Paris Stilo Correct collection. Oh, wow, okay. Okay, so they included the Fito Ten Nude in the shade 1C Petal. 
because the one I have is too deep. So hopefully that will work. And then 1.5 for the um, eye concealer. And then, as you guys know, I love, love, love their Cielo Lumiere. And they sent over shade one. And oh, they sent over two Fito Ten Nudes. This is 00 and Pearl. And then here is the new Stilo Correct, and they sent over shade 00. So this is like a crayon concealer. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. I definitely have to try that under my eyes. That is so great. So it includes benzoic acid, which purifies the skin without drying the skin out, while alpha biz bisabolo? Wow, minimizes inflammation and discomfort, and vitamin E acetate protects the skin from oxidative stresses and provides anti-free radical and antioxidant actions. Wow. So the Stilo Correct has 11 shades, all with neutral undertones. Cool, oh, that's great. Thank you so, so much, Cicely. I cannot wait to try this, and I cannot wait to try this in different shades. Thank you. This is like the never ending pile of PR. Oh, something from YSL. Drench your lips in sweet color and glossy shine with Candy Glaze Lip Gloss Stick. I got one of these, I don't remember, <laughs> from Sephora. I don't know if it was during an event or something, but I really, really loved um, the shade that I got, which is just, I think, number one, possibly. Or no, actually it was this one. Um, number two, Healthy Glow Pumper. Yeah, it's basically clear. Um, it's a beautiful bomb, so I'm not gonna use this because I have this, and I'll tuck this away uh, for a gift. And then this one is number six, Burgundy Temptation. Very, very deep and mysterious. And this is one of those clicky situations that you can't bring back down, so be careful if you have any of these. Be careful not to uh, bring it up too far. So there is Burgundy. Wow, thank you so much YSL. I don't think I've ever gotten PR from YSL, have I? You guys let me know, I don't, I don't think I have. That's very exciting, so cool. Ooh, box from True Botanicals. Ah, season's greetings from True Botanicals. Wow, I just, I can't wrap my head around the fact that it's Thanksgiving next week and yeah, and the holidays are around the corner. I, yeah, I just can't believe it. They sent over a gua sha stone. Um, their nature bathing garden bath soap. Wow, I definitely want to take a bath. After all the traveling <laughs> that I just did, I need to take a bath. Um, Daydream, oh, bubble bath. Wow, it's like they read my mind. And the Chibula Extreme Cream. This is a lovely face cream. And the Moisture Lock Glossy Balm Love. This is their, um, lip balm, which I feel like I need right now. So Moisture Lock Glossy Balm in love. Ooh, so I think this one maybe is tinted. I think their other one looks like it's light pink and it's basically clear. Ooh, pretty, very, very light, which is nice. Nice, hmm, feels great. My lips are so, so dry. Thank you so much, True Botanicals. That was so lovely. I am definitely taking a bath tonight. And finally, wow, I don't even know what this is, but it's from a PR company. Let's open this up. Oh my God, a box from Kylie. Another box from Kylie Cosmetics. This is the, what is this? Oh, the Wizard of Oz. Wow, okay. Now available at Nordstrom. Wow, they go all out, don't they? So some brushes, what are these? Looks like lip glosses. A lip, a lip tint. I think this is the one that's green. Yeah, it's a transformative lip tint. So if you want anything transformative, check out Poppy, um, Poppy King. Her transformative lip products are the best. And then we have an eye and face pressed powder palette. So I guess that is what this guy is. I'm not gonna open this up because I'm sure I'll be gifting this away. But, wow, thank you so, so much, Kylie Cosmetics. All right, that is it for the PR. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm exhausted. There's so much stuff now. I have so much 
recycling to go through. So I'll be back in a little bit. God, this is gonna be a really long video, but I'll be back uh, in a bit to kind of continue talking about and showing you stuff that I got in Morocco. Well, it is 5 p.m. in the evening and I just finished eating dinner. <laughs> I just wanted to get it over with because I know I'm gonna be falling asleep on the earlier side today, uh, tonight, and I'm trying not to fall asleep too early because that will really screw with my jet lag, but um, trying to do the same thing as last night where I kept myself up until eight and that should be good. I actually signed up for a 5 a.m. running class tomorrow morning, so <clears throat> that'll be good. That'll be good. I think that'll help me kind of get back into the groove of things. Um, but I did want to show you some of the other things I picked up. So I showed you the spices, I showed you the book that I got um, at Jardin Majorel. And, okay, so, sorry, we're walking back to my closet because that's where I unpacked and so many things ended up there. So I ended up getting three pairs of slippers and they all are a variety of this kind. So these are like a very typical Moroccan slipper shape. They have like leather bottoms, leather insides, leather lining, but it's the outside here, the upper that is uh, completely different. They had so many different kinds in uh, the marketplace. I, I mean, again, it was just, it was so overwhelming, but I've always been personally a big fan of cross stitch. So these really kind of caught my eye. So I got these hot pink ones and then I got these green ones. I thought these would be cute during Mishmas, very festive. And then I got these, which are very muted compared to the other two pairs. So anyway, I got those and there's also just a ton of, sorry, Butters is in here. Are you eating something maybe? No, she's just sniffing. Um, <clears throat> there are a ton of scarves, beautiful, beautiful scarves there. Again, I was completely overwhelmed and so I didn't pick up any because I have a lot of scarves and I thought I, I, just, I just don't need any more. Um, I did pick up one on the way to the desert because I didn't, or I wasn't actually sure if I had packed any. Anyway, and like we needed to wrap our heads because the sand just gets everywhere. So I did end up getting just, this is basically a piece of fabric. They had this on a bolt and they just like tore it off. Um, but I just loved this color. It is like a mix between henna and saffron. And you end up with this kind of like really yellowy, like marigold kind of yellow orange. So anyway, if you, again, if you follow me on Instagram and you saw the pictures of me in the desert and I had this kind of like either wrapped on my head or around my neck or whatever, this is it. And it's just, it's just a piece of uh, fabric. Um, so I did pick that up on the way to the desert. And then on the way to the beach, these were super popular, um, but we picked up a bunch of like, they're wraps slash blankets. So I just picked up kind of a plain gray striped one but they have this in all different colors. Um, and this is just a really simple kind of like diamond pattern. And they had like different patterns or just like more solid or whatever, but I really liked this one. And this definitely kept me warm on many an occasion in Morocco. And then it has this really pretty kind of like raw type fringe at the end. So picked that up and everything was like really inexpensive. And again, like I was not a big, Hagler, but this was probably, how much was this? Maybe, maybe $5. This was like, I think like $4. This was maybe like 20 bucks. I'm, I'm like doing the conversion in my head. I think this was like 20 bucks. I think the sandals were 20 bucks a pair, something like that. And like, we would all come, we would all come back to the Riyadh at the end of the night and everyone was talking about like what they got and how much they paid and we're like, oh, I overpaid or like, yeah, I got a good deal. Um, <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Um, so that's basically what I bought um, like in marketplace situations. Um, this I actually just unpacked because I had it tucked away and I kind of forgot about it, but on the way to the desert, my friend Jen, when we stopped off, she bought a bunch of these bottles. Uh, Merzuga, that's the town in Morocco that the Sahara Desert um, is in. And she pulled these out when we got to the sand dunes. She was like, it's for sand. So this is honest to goodness 
Saharan desert sand. <laughs> so this is like a really fun keepsake. Um, so I'm glad I got that. And then I did get a few other things um, while I was at the YSL Gardens. So I got two pairs of earrings, basically the same earring, except it's in two different colors, but I just loved it so much because I thought they were so different. So these are tiger's eye and look, they look like branches. Aren't those so cool? So that was one version. So, oh yeah, they're a pair. <laughs> Obviously they're a pair. So that is one version. And then the other version, and look how pretty the little jewelry pouches. Isn't that cute? And then the other version um, is in black. But aren't these pretty? I just thought these were so, um, yeah, like so unique and so different. And I love this like covered wire detail and then the stones. Um, so I got those there and did I pick up anything else? Oh, the um, Hermes bracelets. So an update on that, if you guys missed any of my earlier vlogs talking about this trip or whatever, uh, we went basically to celebrate my friend, Jen. She's one of my oldest friends. Uh, my oldest friend, actually. Yeah, I've known her since I was 17. So anyway, um, <laughs> she turned 50. So I got two Hermes uh, bracelets and then I basically had her choose which one she wanted. So she did pick the one that I thought that she would like, which was, um, it's like one of these, uh, I think the one that she got is thinner. So I think that's a click H bracelet. So it's thinner, but it's gold. Um, and it had like more of like a pink, more colorful uh, kind of uh, design, but it had this like, uh, pink like kitty cat head kind of like poking out in the design and she loves 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 cats so uh, she did end up picking that one so I kept this one with the animal print and the cheetah or whatever and then the one bangle that I got for um, her friend um, that like solid orange enameled one but it's like a thin bangle I just got orange because I was like, well, if anything, it's Hermes orange. Even if they don't like orange, at least it sort of symbolizes the brand. Um, but she loves color and it just went with so many of her outfits and I was so excited and she loved it. So uh, anyway, I had uh, footage of us like putting it all on or whatever on my vlogging camera, but that is gone. And I didn't think to like do it again before we left. So anyway, um, I think, is that all I got? That's essentially all I purchased uh, while we were in Marrakesh. Okay, I'm just rambling at this point because I'm delirious. I think I'm gonna take a bath. Um, I'm debating whether or not I want to use that True Botanicals bubble bath that they said, just sent, um, or I have stuff that's like already open that I should probably use. Let's see what I have. Hi, baby. Hi, Butters, what are you doing? She's got her nap loungewear t-shirt on. Isn't that cute? It's like paint splatters. Um, and it's it's probably technically a little bit too small for her. I don't know if you can see how snug it is. But if it's not snug, I feel like it ends up just, I don't know, kind of flopping around. So I tend to get her clothing that's a little bit, that's a little bit snug. Does it feel like a thunder shirt? Does it make you feel secure? All right. Um, Let's see, I do have a bunch of um, bath stuff, but none of these are like bubbly. So I've got my Amon coconut milk bath that I love. It makes my skin feel so like silky smooth. Um, I've got my CBD bath salts, which I love. I don't know if I need these right now. This is great if I'm kind of achy. I don't need that right now. Um, I've got calming bath salts. Let's see, what is this? Oh, I've got a cream bubble bath. This is not especially bubbly, so I don't even really consider that um, a bubble bath. I've got my, oh, this is a good one. Maybe I'll use this, the Suzanne Kaufman, the Mallow bubble bath. This actually bubbles up quite nicely. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like Mr. Bubbles, but um, it's pretty good. So maybe I'll use, maybe I'll use this tonight.
drive straight till the morning. Oh, how we keep it going. This love is all right, I think that is it for me. That bath was lovely. I just hung out in there for about 15, 20 minutes, and I've got my jammies on. What time is it now? It's probably almost six now. <laughs> Still way too early to go to bed. So I'm just gonna wash my face, um, maybe read and hope I don't fall asleep. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be the rest of my evening. So I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I want you to share about Morocco. You know, some people have asked me like, you know, how did you plan this trip or whatever? It really was, it was all planned out for me because like I said, I tagged along on this yoga retreat and um, the woman, Kelly, who, you know, organized this trip, she asked everyone, you know, do you want to go on the beach excursion? Do you want to go on the hiking excursion? Do you want to go on, uh, on the desert excursion? So we said yes to everything. She basically arranged for everything. Um, so it was just, yeah, it was just really, really easy. And I just kind of threw caution to the wind and just, you know, kind of went along with everything and everyone. I was like, I'll do whatever. I'm just going to go with the flow. Um, and I'm glad I did, because I think if I thought about some of those excursions, like a little bit too much, I probably would not have gone. Like maybe the beach one I wouldn't have gone on because of the long um, car ride. I think I mentioned that um, in the beginning of this vlog, but I'm going to leave all the information I can down below in uh, my description box, like the Riyadh we stayed at in Marrakesh, in Medina, um, La Mamunia, which is uh, the hotel that we spent our last night in, which is gorgeous. Like I said, if you just want to splurge, that is a wonderful hotel. It is uh, very old. It used to be a palace. It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I will leave Kelly's information because she does um, these trips. I think she only does two now. Um, she does this Marrakesh one and I think she does one in Bali. So if you're into yoga and you like to travel, <laughs> she's wonderful. Um, so I'll leave her information down below. I will leave um, the information for the tour guide for the desert. Um, he was incredible. The beach guy, I think the beach guy was just a driver. I don't think he was necessarily a tour guide. Um, so we just sort of like hired him for the day and he just, and he knew the way and he just drove us out. Yeah, any information I can think of, I will leave uh, down below in the description box. But I mean, if you have any sort of itch to check out Morocco, I would say go, just, just do it. Just give it a shot. You know, it is definitely gonna be a little bit of a culture shock. It is definitely gonna be a little bit of a shock to the system um, because it is so, you know, bustly, especially in Marrakesh, it is so bustly. Um, but like the parts outside of the cities, I mean, just absolutely beautiful. The Atlas Mountains are gorgeous. The beach was gorgeous. The desert was, like I said, I mean, it, it made me emotional. It's so breathtaking. It's awe-inspiring, you know, to see all the sand dunes and all that sand <laughs> for miles. <laughs> it's really incredible, really, really incredible. So I do highly recommend it if you want uh, a different kind of trip, you know, maybe one that's a little bit out of your comfort zone. This is definitely different. So if you're feeling adventurous, I would definitely recommend it. Um, but anyway, I'm going to cut this vlog off here because I think that PR haul is going to probably take like more than a half hour. Uh, so this is long enough, but I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. It's so good to be back.